Hello, everyone, and welcome to Field Notes. My name is Casey Lada, and I am the MLRA Office Leader in Lincoln, Nebraska, and the Field Notes Regional Representative for the North Central Soil Survey Region. As a regional representative, I serve on the Field Notes Review Committee. The Review Committee solicits and selects topics for each webinar. We have selected one exciting topic for today's live event, but first, let's go over a few housekeeping items. This is a Microsoft Live event, not a Teams meeting, which means you are joining today's webinar in listen-only mode. We encourage you to ask questions at any time using the Q&A panel. The Q&A panel should open by default. However, if for some reason your Q&A panel is not open, simply click on the question mark icon located in the upper right side of your screen. For closed captions, turn on the live caption button located in the lower right corner. Today's session is being recorded. Recorded sessions are available in Teams on the Field Notes channel and the Soil and Plant Science Division's YouTube channel. Again, thank you for joining us. I hope you enjoy today's session. With that, I'd like to turn it over to the Field Notes moderator, Neil Dominey, to tell you a little more about today's webinar. Take it away, Neil. All right, thank you, Casey, for the introduction to the 37th Field Note webinar. I would like to take just a quick moment uh, before we get on to the presentation for today to recognize Paul Reich, who is going to be retiring soon uh, from SPSD, but his leadership in providing the Field Notes webinars, he's been uh, with them since the beginning. Uh, so we really appreciate Paul's efforts uh, to make this happen for all of us. It's been a great way to share and learn about what's going on with an SPS, SPSD and even outside of. So thank you, Paul, for all of your efforts. And thanks to Jen Mason for stepping up and providing some leadership and continuing our Field Note webinar effort. So thank you to you, Jen, as well. Okay, for today, we are lucky enough uh, to have Ben Hannibal uh, talk about accessibility, and I can't see the entire topic line. I don't have it in front of me, um, but accessibility in the outdoors. So, Ben, thank you for your time and presenting to us. We appreciate it. Sure, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen and start. I um, just kind of want to talk about why I think it's important to go ahead and wait to enjoy the outdoors and wait for almost anybody can enjoy the outdoors. I want to share various techniques, items you can do, and for ways you can experience outdoors. So, um, so I kind of want to bust one of the most common myth is just because the uh, outdoors is accessible for almost anybody. I could surprise that most people think that I have maybe have a disability or I live in an area that I'm not able to experience outdoors. Well, I want to tell you that is a myth, and there's many, many ways that you can enjoy the outdoors, and I'm here to help you out. Uh, what are the ways you can enjoy the outdoors? Uh, we're going to discuss that here, and um, I'm going to start off with sharing a video for everybody and what being in the outdoors means to me and how is it possible for everybody to experience it. So let me get this open. And I'm going to stop sharing and share again so I have audio. And we'll skip Stuffy. this ad and we'll go ahead and start. To experience something new in life refreshes your brain and recharges your soul. I could have stayed in DC this weekend and sat inside, but I was like, I'm going to come up here and experience Vermont. This is my first time here in the summer. And I think that's what surprised me the most was how green and lush everything is. You couldn't ask for better weather. Everybody, regardless of your abilities, needs to spend a little bit of time doing things that is different than your everyday life. Good, how are you? What sets Vermont apart is how much effort they put into making sure these mountain biking trails are accessible. It's impressive. Keep going, down, we'll start here and work our way, here we go. 
it's important to experience something like this to the max effort. You have that adrenaline rush to almost make you feel like you're completely independent. I enjoy putting my head down and listening to the tires go. And the kind of the beauty of that is it's pure. And just concentrating on this one specific thing, which is getting down the mountain fast and safe in that order. <laughs> We're not meant to sit inside all day. We're meant to experience the outdoors. We're meant to be with mother nature and share life experiences with one another. That's what charges my soul. And you're pushing at the top. But we have some paddles that we set up with. Being in a place where other people, they're not seeing your disability. They're just seeing you pursuing the activity that you want to do. It's very comforting to not feel like you're out of place. I think as human beings, we, we want that connection and have that moment like I'm with somebody doing something really cool. I don't think people really know what we can get out there to do. And I think that's the biggest misconception. Accessibility in the outdoors is tough on a multitude of levels. One is just the physical topography and geography. When you make a trip like this, you, you want to make sure that you're going to be taken care of in a way that you can go with your friend or you can go with your family and they can kind of accommodate all of them. Thank you. Oh. Kind of a switch back straight down. There's a lot of moments where I'm like on these trails and I just felt that thrill of flying down the mountain. It's just me. It's like, it's not someone there holding my hand. That's the most important thing is to let people know that you, you can still do this because for the longest time, I didn't think I could do any of this. Minus of moving this bike around on my own, I could come up here independent completely. It's very cool to be around other people that also do what you do, whether it's downhill mountain biking or the trail riding. There's something for everybody here. The area has everything I love. It's all right here in this whole little area. And I'm sure there's even more I haven't even, like, even I experienced and looked at. There's the whole state. I think what makes a trip really special is not even just the activity that you do. It's a lot of times the community that you meet. Because in life, you could have a lot of material goods or you could do a lot of things. But without the community and the understanding and those friendships and relationships, that's really what makes a trip a special trip. To be the outdoors and have that clean, fresh air and have the, the beautiful green trees and that fresh water around you, that to me is Vermont. Thank you all. I'm gonna go ahead and continue. Let me stop sharing and close that video. And here we go again. So next question is ago, why why do I need experience outdoors and why and why does that do? What does that do for my wellness? And I think from what you saw from the video I shared, I hope that inspires you that it's it's good to be outside. It's good to do something active. It's like for me, it, it just it's something that always has refreshed my brain. It's something that, you know, man, I've been working all day and I'm stuck inside and it's beautiful out and it's just nice to be able to experience the outdoors. Um, one of the next items I wanna share, and so everybody make sure they know this, is I'm gonna talk a little about the access pass. Um, this is a, uh, the link is in here, it's a lifetime pass for anyone with a permanent disability, which is a permanent disability, is a um, something that limits one of life major activities, walking, talking, breathing, any a number of things. 
This pass allows you to get you, yourself, and any three friends, or if the park, the national park charges by a carload, free into any national park for the rest of your life. So if you're personally interested, I'd love for you to reach out to me. I can provide this link. You can also go to any national park that sells passes to pick up one as well. Uh, I'm going to kind of start about my next one of my next favorite things. Uh, biking, which allows like different, I'm going to talk about very different types of bikes that allow people to get outside and do some biking. Um, first thing I'll talk about, probably one of the most common ones, what I use um, is a hand cycle. It's for people that have lower limb mobility impairments and a hand cycle. Just as like, as you said, you power with it, your arms. You're often lying down. Uh, sometimes people are sitting up, but you're often lying down and you crank with your arms. Uh, tandem bikes, this uh, allows people, two people to ride uh, at the same time. Um, Four-wheel dual recumbents, these are uh, bikes that are essentially where somebody is using, they're sitting and they use their feet to pedal uh, side by side. It's like a tricycle, uh, which allows two riders to cycle at the same time. And then recumbent cycles, this could be a bike with two wheels where someone's still sitting down and uses their feet to pedal. And then I have the tadpole and the high hand cycle. The high hand cycle is somebody that may not be able to transfer properly, but where they actually would be sitting like in a seat and they would crank with a bike. And I'm gonna kind of give a couple examples and pictures of different types of biking. Uh, so here you have the tandem. This would be the recumbent. As you see, this person is sitting and they're using their feet to pedal. This would be the three the sitting bike. And then these two bikes here, this is like your typical hand cycle, as you can see, that's me. And then in the one in the middle is something that it's kind of different. It's called, um, it's an e-mountain bike. It's something that's mm -hmm. taken off recently in the past couple of years. Uh, these are bikes that allow you to go mountain biking. If you saw a couple in the videos, that's some of the bikes I would use. So typically these bikes kind of have a motor in the back that allowed to give you the extra boost to get up the hills. Uh, next thing I'll talk about is another one of my favorite kind of activities um, is rowing. Um, so a lot of people feel that if you've ever seen a rowboat, uh, that man, that thing is really tiny. I'm now able to get into rowing. So I kind of broke rowing into three classifications. Often you are in a uh, if you have a limited mobility and you're not able to sit or use your legs, you'll have a fixed seat to row, and then you'll have pontoon support support you in the boat uh, from tipping. Uh, there's very different classifications for rowing. Um, each person has different levels and abilities, but you know, adapting rower can also take in a single or double. So if you have limited mobility and you're like, man, I don't think I could do this boat on my own. Somebody else can come with you and do that. Um, I wanted to kind of talk about one of the local rowing clubs here in DC that allows people to get outside on the water. That's capital of rowing. Uh, and then one of the largest uh, events that help people get uh, that takes place is the annual Bayada Regatta, which is in Philly. Uh, this is one of the largest uh, adaptive rowing events for athletes with physical disabilities around the globe, which takes place in Philly on the Schuylkill River. I'm going to go ahead and talk about uh, adaptive equipment and how you can find ways for yourself to get outdoors. Um, adaptive sports move united. If you follow this link here and I'll bring it over, um, allows for you to figure out what kind of types of equipment you might need to get outdoors or include experience different types of adaptive sports. Uh, as you can see here, as I scroll through here, there's backpacking, badminton. I mean, all sorts of great useful tools for like for ways for you to figure out, man, I don't think I can do well fencing or fishing or, you know, I want to go fishing. What kind of types of equipment I might need to go fishing? You know, I don't know if I can experience it. And I'll just kind of click on that and kind of give a quick example. And, you know, there's different types of finding of programs, different types of equipment that you can need. Of course, everybody should have a license when they go fishing. So we'll take it from there. I'm going to bring my presentation back up. Oops.
Um, one of the examples I found on here that was really useful um, was example walking poles. Man, someone's like, I don't think I could do it. And they found uh, walking poles on here and then they use it to um, essentially give you the vendor and the types of poles you may or may not need. Uh, probably one of my other favorite site is called All Trails. Uh, this is a hiking trail website for anybody that likes to enjoy the outdoors. And in this site, it allows you to pick and find all sorts of le uh, local trails or outdoor spots in your area. And Neil, I'm going to pick on you. We're going to go out to Lincoln, Nebraska. We're going to see what is possibly out there that I'm like, hey, I'm out in Lincoln, Nebraska. I got a stroller. I'm not sure what types of trails I can experience. As you see, each of these top trails are rated moderate, easy, and then I can actually go down here and filter. Well, I have my family with me, or you know, uh, my my grandma's with me, or I have a, a friend, and I want to make sure or I want to take my dog, so I can hit stroller friendly, and I can go in there and I can say, hey, there's eight trails in here that I could possibly go to that I know are friendly. It gives you the length, how long it would take you to walk and all sorts of tr different trails like that. And then if you're even feeling more adventurous and you're like, I want a really tough uh, trail, I can pick the hardest trail. Well, sorry, Neil, looks like you don't have any hard trails out in Lincoln, Nebraska, but you know, this is something very useful. It's called all trails. So if you wanna make sure like there's ways for you to get outdoors and experience everything. Bring my PowerPoint back up. Um, so I'm going to talk about a couple adaptive organizations, and these are organizations in many different states across the country um, that help people get outdoors. I'm going to list a couple example of organizations that are on here. Uh, Vermont Adaptive, which is the one you saw in the video, uh, I have uh, one of the largest adaptive centers in the world, which is out in Salt Lake City, the National Ability Center. And then I have the NSCD, the National Sports Center for the Disabled, which is out in Colorado. And someone may ask, well, why are these centers important? And I'll give it a personal example from a personal experience. Um, I did a trip out to Salt Lake uh, to visit some friends, but I had two days to kill. And most people think, well, you don't have any of your, your equipment with you. You have to sit inside. I called up one of these local organizations and I was able to rent a bike for the day to go outside and bike and not have to worry about uh, finding a, a person to go with or anything, you know, and they had a really cool event going on. Uh, a lot of all these events are usually nonprofit. They're all over the country. Uh, if you go, for example, to Move United, you can often find these organizations, you know, one of the best things I could also recommend is Google or social media, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. Uh, those are great examples of finding these types and allows you to connect and like, and they may even be able to share and help you with ideas on how to get outside. I wanted to kind of get a non full non disclosure statement. You know, I wasn't like picking on anything or saying, hey, I'm favoring anything and just showing that these are possible tools and your resources. And I'm going to end it with a little video of like rowing and how that possibly works and how that possibly allows you to do that. And then I could take some questions. And as you see, it's nice and peaceful. It's beautiful. If it, forever, those who are wondering what where I'm rowing at is on the Anacostia River which is across from that stadium here in DC. I will say the river is not clean, but it is still very peaceful as you see the sun setting and we're outside getting good exercise in. So I will take questions and answers if anybody has any. Well, thank you, Ben, so much for the presentation. Great, uh, you know, you may have an actor uh, opportunity in your future, right? <laughs> I, I uh, hope so. So I think the story I like to tell about that, and this is why I encourage people to do a random trip, um, is that was a commercial I was asked to help shoot because the state of Vermont wants to promote accessibility and wellness. And um, 
the year before I decided to take a random trip up to Vermont and um, I asked my buddy to come who's in that video as well and we both up and they said we like you so much we want you to come back up and help shoot this commercial so um, Vermont is one of the states that wants to promote um, accessibility to all and wellness and allows people to get outdoors and experience different things so I always encourage you to try something new uh, from a random social media post. Nice. All right. Um, thank you for that, Ben. I do have a quick question and then I see some in the queue here. Um, one of the slides you posted or shared was uh, Adaptive Sports. I believe it was a website and I don't remember what the website was called. Um, what I have it here, it is Move United um right here and what i can do is i think i can put it in the chat here for everybody right very good thank you for that and while there it is folks um and i'll put the all trails as well okay. there as well so yep. people have that Going to take you a link in Nebraska, but you can change the search up top. I, I do believe that's a great place to to visit and, and even live <laughs> if you're interested. Lincoln is a great place. Uh, thanks for that prompt, Ben. Um, ben, one question that came in: Do you have a favorite national park to visit? Um, Pi. One of my favorite national parks is it's around here. I'm going to be a little favorite is Shenandoah. Um, it has a skyline drive. is absolutely beautiful to even just drive up in your car. Um, I've also, you know, enjoyed, there's a couple great little parks around me and around here. Uh, Teddy Roosevelt Island is a great hiking trail. Um, you know, on my list to probably go visit is like the big ones, uh, Yosemite um, and the parks out west, which I haven't got a chance to visit yet. Very good, thank you for that. Um, ben, getting back to that video that you showed right away, the hand bike, or I believe is what you called, um, how how fast do you go on, like down a mountain and stuff? You get up some pretty fast speeds, I would guess. Uh, the fastest I've been is 30 miles per hour. Um, wow. So um, that was a little bit hairy, uh, but usually <laughs> you're about 20. Uh, in my hand cycle, if I'm on a flat ground, I'm about 15 to 18 miles per hour. Uh, downhill, you know, 24, 30, and then I go really slow uphill, so. Well, very good. Well, thank you for enlightening okay. all of us on opportunity and finding some of these, uh, you know, just more, more knowledgeable on the opportunities that are out there. And we really thank you for coming on, Ben, and presenting to all of us. We appreciate You're welcome. it. Thank you. Um, anybody has questions? If you're ever interested in any of these things, you know, definitely feel free to reach out to me. All right. Thank you. Thank you yeah. again, Ben. And yeah, feel free to take Ben up if you have any additional questions. Um, so as you can see on your screen, um, our next webinar, July 9th from 2 to 3 Eastern. And then I guess maybe I was too fast on my prompt for happy retirement to Paul. <laughs> Uh, yes, Paul, thank you for all your hard work and dedication um, to push. This is just one small thing you, you do, you've done for SBSD, Paul, and, and we've appreciated the opportunity. So thank you all.